Good morning. I'm Dr. Huang. Today, I'm going to show you how to derive the rate law from the reactor mechanism. There are three facts I want you to memorize when you derive the rate law from the reactor mechanism. Number one, the rate of each elementary reaction can be obtained by inspecting the equation. Number two, the final rate law cannot contain any intermediate. Number three, the intermediate can be eliminated by applying steady state approximation. Here is our example. It takes four elementary steps from the reactant to the products. We need to find the expression for the rate of production of CH4 and C2H6. I'm going to show you both. Let's look at how do we get the rate of production of CH4 first. When we look at the four elementary reactions, only the second step will produce CH4. That's good news. We can write down the rate law expression from the second elementary reaction first. Well, when we look at the rate law expression, we find that it contains one intermediate. As we know, the final rate law cannot contain any intermediate. Therefore, we have to eliminate the intermediate. The general method to eliminate the intermediate is to use steady state approximation. Now let's apply steady state approximation to CH3. When we look at the four elementary reactions, all of them contain CH3. Does not look too good. But anyway, let's try to apply steady state approximation to CH3 anyway. Steady state approximation means that the rate of production of an intermediate must be equal to the rate of consumption of the same intermediate. Well, let's put it down. As we can see from the elementary reactions, the first reaction and the third reaction will produce CH3. The second reaction and the fourth reaction will consume CH3. Well, when we look at this steady state approximation, we can find that we introduce another intermediate. That's bad news. You want to eliminate intermediate. You don't want to introduce new intermediate. Well, don't worry. If you have more intermediates, what you can do is you apply the steady state approximation to the new intermediate. Now let's apply steady state approximation to CH2, CHO. Well, when we look at the four elementary reactions, the third reaction and the second reaction contain CH2, CHO. To apply steady state approximation, we just set up the rate of production of CH2, CHO equal to the rate of consumption of CH2, CHO. Let me show you how to do it. This is what we get. When we look at this equation and this equation, these two are equal, these two can be gone. Then let's get the expression of CH3 concentration. This is square, this should be the square root, which is also half power. Since we get the expression of the CH3 concentration, we can plug it in to this equation to replace CH3 concentration in the read law of CH4. We should simplify the read law expression because it contains CH3, CHO concentration here. It also contains CH3, CHO concentration expression here. Well, this is the read law expression for the read of production of CH4. Now let's work out the read of production of C2H6. When we look at the elementary reactions, only the last step will produce C2H6. That's good news. Now let's put down the read law expression for C2H6. Since we already know the expression of the concentration of CH3, we can just plug it in. Then we can get our answer. 
for the read or production of C2H6. This is the expression of the concentration of CH3. This is half power, this is second power. Therefore, when they multiply each other, it's equal to 1. K4 and K4 will cancel. Then we can simplify this into the final form. I think we're done.